Welcome to German history with a German accent. My name is Wolf, W-O-L-F, just like the animal. And in today's video, I'm speaking about the Kaputsch of 1920. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy my content. On March 13th, 1920, the Kap Ludwitz Putsch began and lasted for about 100 hours before the coup d'etat failed. Let's have a look why Walter von Lüttwitz and Wolfgang Kapp tried to overthrow the government in the Weimar Republic. The peace agreement between the German Empire and the Triple Entente, the Treaty of Versailles, was seen as extremely unfair and was despised by the German people. That the so-called Weimar Collation, the Social Democratic Party of Germany, the SPD, the Center Party, and the German Democratic Party, the DDP, signed this agreement and raged the people, especially in the military. Since the Treaty of Versailles limited the German army to 100,000 men, the opposing soldiers under the leadership of Walter von Lüttwitz, he commanded the Reichswehr Group 1 in Berlin, turned against their government. On March 10, 1920, Von Lüttwitz spoke with Reichspräsident Friedrich Ebert to present him with an ultimatum, in which he demanded to belay the order to reduce the manpower in the German army, and he also demanded a new election for the Reichstag. Friedrich Ebert denied these demands and asked the general to resign within the next 24 hours. But instead of resigning, Walter von Lüttwitz met with Hermann Erhardt, whom commanded the Free Corps Erhardt, also known as Marinebrigade Erhard, and von Lüttwitz ordered him to march onto Berlin. Von Lüttwitz informed Wolfgang Kapp and Erich Ludendorff about his actions. The government in the capital of Germany learned about the oncoming Free Corps, and although the Minister of Defense, Gustav Noske, had ordered three companies to defend the government area, the members of the government decided to leave Berlin after they got word that the military companies would not fight against the Free Corps and the military leader of the coup, Walter von Lüttwitz. The government first fled to Dresden, where they had almost been arrested before they made their way to the southern German city of Stuttgart. The fleeing politicians barely made it out of the government area. It is said that only 10 minutes after they had left, troops of the Brigade Erhard marched through the Brandenburger Tor, and Wolfgang Kapp was proclaimed as the new Reichschancellor. Walter von Lüttwitz took over the command of the army as a new Minister of Defense. The Reichswehr troops of Group Command 1, which he commanded prior to the coup, remained mostly loyal to him. Soldiers who had not been under his command remained somewhat skeptical and neutral although it can be guessed that they were not unsympathetic with the Putschists. The flat government meanwhile thought about how to regain control in Germany. One option would have been to use the army to fight off the Putschists, but the chief of the general staff, Hans von Segt, officially his position was called chief of the troop office since the treaty of Versailles prohibited a German general staff, said troop does not fire on troop. Whether he exactly said this or not, um, it accurately describes his position though. So instead, the government decided to call for a general strike. The said strike began to paralyze the country, so neither Kapp nor Lüttwitz could effectively run a government. Not only newspaper and mail had been stopped, the strike even caused water and the water and power supply to collapse. And since government workers who ran the state finances also participated in the strike, the putsches ran out of money too. These circumstances, combined with the poor organization of the coup, led to its failure on March 17, 1920, after only four days. Wolfgang Kapp had already resigned on March 15, but Walter von Lüttwitz tried to hold on to power for another day. But by this time, he no longer enjoyed the trust of his troops. After their coup failed, Wolfgang Kapp flew to Sweden and Walter von Lüttwitz flew to Hungary. 
This coup d'etat also ignited the so-called Ruhr uprising in the same year, as well as uprisings in Thuringia and Saxony, which were fought down by Reichswehr and Free Corps troops. Thank you so much for watching.